Who are here in person, those of you who are joining us uh, on Facebook or by phone, um, someone drove into Shirley's fence again and took it out. Um, so she is at home, um, and the 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 I think that's that's very stressful for her, and as it would be for most of us. But she is joining us by phone this morning. Um, uh, Anita Jewell has tested positive for COVID and is at home. Uh, apparently there is a new strain and uh, that seems to be what she has acquired. Um, what other news? We will be praying for them later today, but um, Bonnie Wink's brother Joey uh, died on Saturday. He was working apparently in a landfill and um, died while he was working there. So we want to be remembering their family. Um, we have Jenny who is not with us this morning, but hopefully is on Facebook. Uh, and if you are, good morning, Jenny. We hope you are feeling better. Uh, one of the things about a church this size is if you're not here, we miss you. And if you're not here uh, t too long, um, we will hunt you down. Um, Henry and Douglas uh, are dealing with allergies this morning. Um, they have let me know they won't be here. Yes, ma'am. Good. So let me ask you to pray with me as we. Ha yes, ma'am. My friend that I grew up with, Heidi Elizabeth, her um, fiance, our boyfriend, or whatever, he is having major heart issues. He's waiting on a transplant, and he is at Washington Hospital Center, I believe. Um, she's the school counselor, and she's missing time from work and everything. So she's asked for prayer and any help that's available to her while she's trying to take care of him. But he has two options with an implant temporarily. They're trying to make a decision on which one to use until they can find him a heart transplant. So we need to pray about that, please. And we will be remembering all of these people when we come to our time for prayer. Um, no, 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 no. I, I, sometimes we start talking about these things early. And golly, it doesn't fit into the... The thing that's important is that we remember and we pray for each other because we are a family that prays for one another. Join me in our opening prayer. Oh God, for these people we have named, we pray. And we'll pray again. And in the silence of our hearts, we will pray again later today. We live in a world that is just a hot mess and we look for ways to be part of the healing. And so come, be with us this morning. Hold us and keep us for your name's sake. Amen. Please stand for our call to worship. So much of the Old Testament strikes us as brutal or cruel. The destruction, the violence, the anger of God. But every parent knows what it is like to get angry at their children, and sometimes that anger must feel like the end of the world. Oh God, don't let us ever forget that you never tear down what you're not going to build up. You always. Amen. Come, 
just as you are Hear the Spirit call Come just as you are Come and see Come receive Just as you are, hear the Spirit call, come just as you are, come and see, come receive. Don't you hear the Spirit call? Come just as you are. Come and see Christ my King. Please be seated. We have named already a number of the folks that we want to be praying for this morning. Are there others? Are there other concerns or joys or requests? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just prayers for the uh, senseless gun violence, a family of four or five gun down senselessly in Texas, including the Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, Yvonne Hayes has asked for us to pray for her and her family. She didn't say why, just to pray. We are praying, Yvonne, and I'm so glad that you are with us this morning. Others? Then please. It feels overwhelming some days, God. And yet, when we are most overwhelmed, you are most present. So we pray for Yvonne and her family. We pray for the family of Joey Wink, particularly for Bonnie. We pray, oh God, for those struggling with illnesses, whose side effects affect them mentally. We pray, O oh God, for all whose names we have called this morning. O oh God, we don't know what to do. And yet we do because you have told us 
what you require of us. To do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with you. Strengthen us for that task. We pray in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to do something weird this morning, and I heard a laugh that goes, and that's different how. Um, this is our time for our children's moments, um, and there aren't any children here this morning. I need a volunteer child, please. You ought to be taping this, Harry. You could blackmail is a wonderful thing. So, um, what I want to do this morning is I need your help. Okay? I want you to walk around in the sanctuary for me. And I want you to find the person that's here this morning that God doesn't love. That's impossible. What do you mean that's impossible? God loves everybody. Say that again. You mean there's nobody in this whole place that God doesn't love? No. Well, I'm kind of a mean person some days. What about that? Still love you. <laughs> I happen to have heard this morning that you read books late at night with a Kindle light that keeps your husband awake. <laughs> Does that mean God doesn't love you? Of course he loves me. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. And that is the whole point. We sometimes, particularly as grown-ups, uh, but sometimes as children too, forget that there is no one that God doesn't love. And when we forget that, it's really a bad thing, not just because we go, oh, I should remember that, but that God doesn't love you, that means I can do whatever I want to to you. I can push you around. I can be mean. But the problem is, I'm not pushing hard, Harry. Harry, I'll come up here. <laughs> I, but you see, sometimes if we decide that God doesn't love certain people, we turn them from a person into an it, and we get to do whatever we want. And so we need to all remember whether, no matter how we are, um, that God really does love everybody, including us, including us when we're not particularly nice. Um, and thank you for helping me remember that this morning. Let's pray. Remind us, O oh God, that we are loved, but that we aren't the only ones who are loved because your love is boundless. Loving me does not take away your love from anyone else, and your loving them does not take away your love from me. 
remind us this morning in Jesus name amen, amen. thank you you make such a great pretend kid thank you please stand up wave to our folks on Facebook because we really miss you and we're glad you're here oh Michael Armstrong is watching us hey Michael we miss you uh, Joyce Lee all of those folks who are watching this morning and then look at people around you and tell them you're glad they're here and offer them the peace of God And so I say to you this morning, whether you are here in body or here in spirit on Facebook, that starts to sound like Paul. The peace of God be with you. I'm going to ask that Joyce would come now and lead us in our prayer over our offering. Father God, we thank you for the tithes and offerings that we have to give back to your kingdom. We ask, Lord, that you guide us in how to use them the best. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us all here safely today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, you can see. You can see. Well, I, I, I don't know that he doesn't have this on another a, 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 a yes. different. Uh, so we'll wait just a second. I do love mornings like this because they remind me I am not the only one that this stuff happens yes. to. Exactly. You know, because uh, it's easy to go, I'm the only one who oversleeps and leaves their hearing aids at home. Uh, so. So do you want us to do it a cappella? I'm, I'm sorry? A mighty fortress, our God, a bulwark never fading. See? 
And so, in keeping with the theme of today, I'm going to throw you another curveball. Uh, I got thrown this curveball at about 7 o'clock this morning when it appeared that I needed to change my sermon. That happens every now and then. And uh, a couple of weeks, was it last week or two weeks ago, Carlton, um, I had uh, 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 old, two old, long Old Testament lessons and one short New Testament lesson, and I got up and I got started, and, and Carlton told me after the service, he says, I just knew when you stood up and started reading those passages, you were never going to get around to the, uh, to the gospel lesson. Well, this morning... I want to go straight to the gospel lesson. And it is in John 12, 23 through 27. I'm going to actually lengthen it out a little bit for you. Um, we know that John's gospel was the last one written. We know that John has Jesus spending long periods of time talking about what's going to happen after he's gone, making sure his disciples know what he wants. Um, but there's this strange story that takes place toward the end of John's Gospel in John 12. And it, it seems strange unless we dig around in it. Uh, that was my problem this morning. I started digging around in this gospel text and went, oh, I've got to change what I'm going to say this morning. So, beginning with verse 20. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival, at the Passover, were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we would see Jesus. And Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. Those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me and wherever I am there will be my servant also and whoever serves me God will honor okay that that sounds all good and King Jamesy but what's going on here well seems to me that there's a bunch of stuff happening here that relates to our children's moment. The, the first thing that is happening here is that these Greeks come and, and they, they, they want to meet Jesus. Philip is from Bethsaida. What has that got to do with it? Well, there was a fairly large Greek population in that area. And it's possible that these particular Greeks were people that Philip knew. The problem was that... Have you ever known anybody who holds a grudge for a really long time? Okay. Have you ever known a group of people 
who hold a grudge for a really long time. Have you ever known a group of people who hold a grudge for a really long time that suddenly have decided that that means that God doesn't love the person they're holding the grudge against and so they can do anything they want to? As many of you know, um, I have friends and a, and a deep personal commitment to folks in Chin State. I have followed that revolution. It matters to me. But I had a really disturbing time this week because someone had posted where I could see it a picture of a group of Chin soldiers torturing a Tatmandaw prisoner of war. And one of the Chin folks that I later introduced myself to online said, what are you doing? Yes, we have been hurt. Yes, we have known people who have died. Yes, we know people who have been tortured. But is this who we want to be? Now, I want you to take that thought about that grudge and, and what it, at least for some folks, begin to allow, has begun to allow them to do. And I want you to think for just a minute about Because we know that, uh, you remember the, the uh, Syrophoenician woman? She's a Gentile. She comes to Jesus and she says, my daughter's sick. And Jesus does this really weird thing where he says, we don't take the food for the children off the table and throw it to the dogs. And his disciples must have nearly lost their minds. That's not a really Jesus comment. That's not a comment you really expect to hear from Jesus. And she comes back to him, remember, and she says, even the dogs can have the crumbs. She's not about to get locked into a fight with Jesus. She's going to take care of her daughter. And Jesus says to her, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. Go home. Your daughter's well. But, but, but that, that moment is rooted in this centuries-long grudge against Greeks. Those of you who have read the book of Maccabees know that there was a particular Greek ruler and house of rulers who were horrendous to the Jewish population. They tortured them. They tried to wipe them and their religion out. They sacrificed a pig on the altar in Jerusalem in the temple hoping to defile it so much that nobody would be able to use the temple again. Those kinds of grudges run deep. And so these Greeks come, and they come to Philip, and they say, we want to meet Jesus. And Jesus says, I mean, and, 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 and Philip goes, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know whether we do that here. Do we do that here? And so he runs over to his brother Andrew, and he says, do we do that here? And they go to Jesus, and they go, Jesus, do we do that here? Do we introduce just anybody to you? And Jesus makes this absolutely weird response. Now, I, I, I want to give it to you in a slightly different translation. Jesus says, the time has come for me to be lifted up. And if I am lifted up, 
I will draw all people to me. That's a little bit opaque, but that was Jesus' answer to do we do that here? I think we need to ask that question ourselves. Do, do, do we do that here? Jesus says we do. And oh, by the way, what do you think Jesus means when he says, if I be lifted up? Any, anybody? Come on. You're smiling and nodding your head. What do you think he means? Yes. And too many times we go, oh, that's the ascension. That's the second coming. No, it's not. The revolution in living began not at Easter Sunday, though Easter Sunday tells us that we will be victorious, it begins when Jesus is lifted up on the cross. And he says, if I am lifted up, I will draw everyone to me. Not the people you like or you like or the people that are friends or, or the people who behave like we do. I have these discussions with other pastors sometimes that uh, whenever we start welcoming new groups of folks to church, not just this church, but church in general, what we mean by that, if we say, oh, those people are welcome, we mean the ones who look like us or who fit in with us. And, and the truth is, Jesus did not say, if I be lifted up, I will draw those folks who just happen to fit into my little box. Think about that for a minute. Because that, thinking about that is what made me rewrite my sermon. You can see why. We, you and I, all too often forget that Jesus' love includes everybody. It, you, you remember the song, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And it's true. It's true. I defy you to find any place in the gospel that says it ain't so. But, you know, children are cute. And they're sweet. And they're lovely most of the time. But... What happens if we broaden that? I'm about to quit preaching and go to meddling, so buckle in. What if we add a second verse to that song? Jesus loves all of the people, all the people of the world. Straight, asexual, gay, and trans, Jesus holds them in his hands. Jesus loves all of the people of the world. Oh, preacher, you can't sing that. Oh, yeah? That's Jesus' song. If I be lifted up, I will draw all humanity to me. It doesn't matter whether I like you or not. It doesn't matter whether you like me or not. It doesn't matter whether I want to take a long car ride with you. Jesus said, if any of this stuff we say is true, is true. If I be lifted up. I will draw all humankind to myself. 
And that to me, I don't know about you, you're, you're, you're probably better at this than I am, but that just scares the spit out of me. It means I'm going to have to sit down at the great banquet in heaven with some people that I really don't like. It even means that I'm going to have to sit down today, tomorrow, with some people that I don't like. One of my favorite preachers was a man named Fred Craddock. Uh, name probably doesn't mean anything to you. He was a disciple of Christ preacher, taught at Emory University, stood four foot nothing. I mean, literally, this is a guy. You remember when, when uh, Douglas read scripture for us and I had to put him on the steps? When Fred preached, he had to be standing on a platform. But he told the story of the man at the pool at Bethsaida. And the man was there because he was paralyzed. And he kept looking to be healed because the word was there was an angel that came down and stirred the waters at Bethsaida and the first person in the pool got healed. And it had to be sort of funny in a weird way. You know, there's all these people parked around the pool and somebody says, the angel, the angel came and everybody, poof. And then they come up going, no, that was just the wind. Drenched, whatever. But when the angel does come, who gets healed? Old lady who can't walk anymore. Paralyzed man at the back of the road. Attic who's so stoned they can hardly get up off the ground. No. The pool is a horrible place. Nobody stands at the pool and sings kumbaya. Everybody's fighting to get in the water. And into this, Jesus comes and he says to the man, do you want to be healed? Isn't that a stupid question? Oh, no, I've just been coming here for 30 years. I, I, I like the neighborhood, and, you know, I come and play pinochle with my friends. Of course I want to be healed, but there is no one. Hold on to that word. We're going to come back to it. There is no one to help me get in the water when the angel shows up. Now, this man is a whiner. And there is no way to modulate the human voice to make a whine acceptable. There's nobody for me in the pool. I don't like this man much. It doesn't matter. What I like doesn't matter. Jesus says, take your bed and go home. You and I live in a world that is very much like the pool. And for the people most desperate for healing and love and care, there's nobody to put them in the pool. But if I be lifted up, I will draw all humankind to myself. Do I have any people here who like Flannery O'Connor? Do I have any people here who even know who Flannery O'Connor is? Yeah, okay. Oh, wow, I'm old. Flannery O'Connor was a Southern writer. She was Catholic. All of her short stories have religious overtones. And in one of her stories, there is an old woman who is... The, in, in the dictionary next to bigot is this woman's picture. And she's out hanging up her laundry one day and she has a vision. The skies open 
and there is a road leading to heaven. And all these people are streaming into the gates of heaven. In front of her. And those people streaming into the gates of heaven are all the people she hates. Blacks. People with different genders. People who are poor, people who don't vote the way she does, and they're all getting in ahead of her. That's what happens when we live at the pool. But when we hear that if I am lifted up, I will draw all humanity to myself, we see the gates of the kingdom open and everyone streaming in. Sometimes that leaves me speechless. Sometimes that picture brings me to tears. Do we do that here? Do we do that here, Jesus? Do, do we bring people to meet you that, that, that we don't think are supposed to be here? Yeah, actually, Jesus says, you do. Because I have been lifted up. I have made this sacrifice. And when I look at the world through that lens, It is a very different world than life at the pool. And I can sing, Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Alleluia, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. The battle is over. He has been lifted up. What stops us from lifting up our wings to fly? Amen and amen.
kind to himself. Lift up your wings and fly. Strengthened by the knowledge that in the goodness of God we were born. By the watchfulness of God we are kept all the day long. And in the love and mercy of God we are all being redeemed and made whole. Amen. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Have a great week. And the peace of God be with you.